Okay, I'm Greg Benfield. I'm Claire I'm, Jones. <laughs> and we're talking about grade mark. Claire's from the business school and she's going to be explaining a few things about how she uses grade mark. So, Claire. Mm. Yeah, I think I came reluctantly to grade mark. I'm a bit of a Luddite, so quite taken with the idea of having a pile of assignments and bringing them home and it feels very, you know, like that's what you do. Um, I was persuaded by a colleague, actually, Adrian Rivers, to, to put this onto our strategy module in the second year because the students are writing quite long reports. They've got appendices as well, so it's quite a lot of paper to be dragging around. Um, and I'm a complete convert, I have to say. It, it's so much, it's easier, it's more efficient. I think it works with different kinds of assignments in, in different ways, but uh, across the board, it's just transformed how I do my marking. And it's just, yeah, it just makes everything much easier, to be honest. So do you use it? For all of your assignments, or uh, for pretty, a specific purpose? Pretty much. We've got, we've got some stuff that comes in on one of my first year modules where it's formative feedback. So what we want to be able to do is to mark the assignments and hand them back to the students in class and actually talk through the feedback, turn it into an action plan. So for that one, we're keeping the paper handy, the hard copy. But for everything else, we get it coming in electronically. It's easier for the students. They don't have to have a physical hand in point. And then mark everything online with grade mark. Everything goes back to the students. So... You know, the, the kind of take-up rate, if you like, of the feedback is, I think, a lot better because it's so much easier for the students to access. Whereas, you know, if you're, if you're giving it to a coursework handbook, that service, which is only available at lunch times, you know, it all just sits there and never gets picked up. Right. So, yeah, across the board, pretty much. So, can you show us something about how... Yeah. Um, we're, we're looking at one of your modules is a first year module. This is actually a second, second. This is the second year strategy oh. module where we introduced it last year. Um, so the students um, last year submitted a big kind of 2000 word business report right at the end of the semester. Um, there we go. Cool. So, what's going on in this one? So, this is. Um, so this is the student's report. This is, so if I want to check um, maternity and originality, I can see that there. And flop over to grade mark there. And um, so I can read through it, just as a kind of starting point. Um, what I normally do is, as I start reading through it, I'm dropping in these comments from over here. So um, what you start off with, and to be honest, this is one of the things that put me off initially, was the, the kind of automatically loaded comments. I looked at them and thought, oh, that's, that's no use to me. You know, the stuff about referencing wasn't the kind of referencing we use. Some of the wording wasn't right. And I thought, I, I just felt like the kind of thing where if I were a student receiving that, I'd think, oh, this is just automatically generated. It's not the personal touch that I need to put into my feedback to students. Yep. But then I realised <laughs> that you can create your own comments. And that's what's really transformed it for me. Because, for example, with first years, I'm often having to make the same comments over and over again. It'll be about use of sources or referencing or how they structured their thinking or being evaluative rather than descriptive, those kind of things that come up over and over again. So I could have a kind of a headed comment that says um, business report conventions, you know, don't forget this is what it's supposed to look like. And I can drag that one across. So that's where the efficiency comes in because rather than retype that over and over again. But then you can edit those comments. So whatever you've got as your kind of standard, there's the heading for this comment, which is what the students see. Then they click on it and they get the little blurb. But then you can add something else, so you can still personalise it. So can we see an example of that? Yeah, so um, I wonder if I can find an example of something where... Okay, so sweeping statement. This is something that I have to pick some of my students up on, especially the first years. So I've added a little bit of a comment there, but then I can go in and say, so for example, here what I'd suggest is that you, you know, think about being more specific, get into some sources to get data to support what you're saying rather than writing these kind of generalisations. Um, and so as the students are reading through they can be looking at this stuff and they can hover over a comment. I mean, this was actually marked by one of my colleagues. but um, And they'll either just see, that's the comment, that's all we need to say, or they can go into it and they can see a, a, kind of a fuller comment. Well, they do, they do know who's marked their work because if we go into the overall comment, so they've got these kind of comments as they work through. So this is the equivalent of taking a pencil and working through someone's assignment and yeah. kind of underlining things or circling things and making comments. And then overall, we're giving a kind of overview. So typically, three or four paragraphs of, okay, overall, here's what you did well, here's, here are the areas for improvement. So they've still got that. And that would always have my name or the tutor's name. And when I put the text comment, I always have a final paragraph that says, please also see the individual comments annotated to your assignment. 
So the students are instructed to go here for the overview, if you like. They can see their mark, but also to have a look at what's in the assignment. Um, and with the text comment, um, you can also do that as a voice-based feedback thing, which I actually did quite a lot in the summer. I think some students who've got that kind of auditory preference, if you like, would really like to just hear somebody talking them through their assignment. I'm sure other students really like the written thing. And of course, it's difficult to know who you're dealing with. So I've been playing around with that a bit and then in the process of getting feedback from students about what they prefer. The other great thing about, well, electronic marking in general, but I think grade mark in particular, everything's in one place so I can moderate as I go along. So I'm not having to say to my markers, there's a pile of stuff, take it away, bring it back when you're finished. I can see how the marking is going. So kind of completion rate, if you like, how people are making progress. But also I can dip into things. So I can have a look at uh, a chunk of assignments that have been marked by one of my team and I can and see the mark so I can pick out you know maybe a recent grade something in the 40s something in the 70s whatever and I can go in and I can add comments if I want to um, or I can add to the to the overall comment and say yeah this has been moderated by the module leader mark agreed um, so it's I think it's another way that just makes it a bit more efficient um, and you know and it's very easy to get those messages back to the students because they can see that I've been in there as well and had a look you know, so, what would have been the chief kind of barriers to some out going over to electronic I think, marking? I think there is that concern about working from a screen too much, but to be honest, I work from a screen all the time, so it doesn't bother me. Um, but I know some colleagues have real issues with you know, struggling with the glare. Um, mm. So I suppose that's something to be aware of, for the sake of your eyesight and sanity. That was, that was probably my biggest barrier, was finding that little button at the bottom. <laughs> But that's the great thing, I think, using it, playing around with it, finding out what's there, talking to people in learning resources and in OCSLD and finding out, you know, what are the, what are the kind of tricks, if you like, stuff that's in there that you don't realise. Um, like you can, you can import your rubric so that we can actually set up them. And this was one of my main concerns. I wanted to make sure that those assessment criteria that we're talking to students about all the time, that we could somehow translate that across. So response to the task, we can give the students a grade. Um, and what we've put in here at the bottom, um, you know, this isn't a very good assignment, but, you know, so the student can go into this part as well and they can see against those criteria, how have I done? But it means everything's in one place. Yeah. Um, but, but I think the, the other side of it, I suppose, in terms of barriers is making sure that you communicate all of this to students so they know how to submit work online. You know, that's relatively straightforward. But it's the other end of it. We wanted to be sure that they knew what to look for. So you're not just looking at your assignment and those little kind of bubbles, those comments. You're not just looking at the overview comment bit or the voice, um, the three-minute kind of block of voice-based feedback. You're not just looking at the rubric. We want you to look at all of those. And, and so that was something we had to work on. Um, I think some of the student feedback was this kind of confusion about what to find where, what were they looking at. So I guess the more this is used on multiple modules in the students program the more they get used to knowing yeah. how to use it it's like anything yeah, you know. yeah. Um, but yeah I'd say it's been pretty positive to be honest I and mean, I haven't had any students complain about this yeah. uh, not at all okay thanks Claire. yeah no worries <laughs>